Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com and today we have a fun spot from a $5,000 buy-in World Series of Poker event. I open it up with Pocket Jacks from early position to 300 and then the Hijack, Cutoff, Button, and Big Blind All Call. When this happens, go ahead and recognize, unless we get a set, we are going to be playing a small to medium pot because whenever four other opponents see the flop or more, you should not be trying to get all of your money in with just an overpair. And if you are doing that, you're going to find that very often you end up losing very big pots and winning small pots. So usually we're making a bet, but if we like get raised or if we check and it goes bet, raise, or even bet call sometimes, we're just going to be getting out of the way. And um, clearly if it comes with an ace, a king, or a queen, we're very likely just done with it because the odds someone has an ace or king or a queen among these four players is quite high. So do not think that your goal is to blast your money in, and also don't think that your goal is to just check fold every time. Basically, you have to realize you have a very marginal hand, even if you do make an overpair at a very multi-way pot. This time, though, that's not the case. We get the nuts. Okay. Big blind checks, and now I can either check or bet, right? This is one of these situations in live poker where you can definitely look to the left and see if your opponents plan on betting. If someone is like happy, they're getting their chips ready, then you want to check and you want to get a check raise in. Because if you bet, they're just going to call. And if they have a draw, like say they have 10-9 or queen-9, right? You'd much rather check raise those hands than bet. Because if you bet, they're always going to be getting the right odds plus implied odds to call. So if you can get in a check raise, that's clearly great. If you can look behind and tell that everyone's done with it, or you can, they just have good poker faces, which should usually be the case in a $5,000 tournament, then you just want to bet yourself. And in this scenario, I don't want to be betting all that often, right? I want to be betting with my best made hands and my draws. And my draws are going to be the suited connected hands that have a gut shot or an open industry draw. My premium made hands are going to be most top pairs and better, maybe like king, jack and better. You got to be checking some queen jacks, jack 10, stuff like that. Because if we bet with jack 10 and get called or raised again, we're pretty unhappy. Just like I was talking about with pocket jacks a second ago if it comes all low cards. So... I think betting is definitely the default play here. Um, if I had bottom set, I would definitely bet. Uh, but with top set, you can usually check a little bit more often, just because it's harder for anyone else to have anything good to call you. But really, multi-way, you do want to be betting a lot of the time, unless it's very clear someone yet to act will bet. So I did decide to check. This guy decides to bet 300 now. Seeing you bet 300, um, <laughs> this makes me think that this was just so obvious to me that this was going to happen. Because usually you don't want to bet 300 in this scenario with much of anything. So if someone is betting 300, it's almost always not a great player. And if it's not a great player, then I probably saw it coming. So if you see it coming, definitely check. 300, call, call. This is going to be nice. We're getting a nice raise. Oh, but now big blind makes it 2,150. So what kind of range is that? That's probably going to be premium made hands and draws. So... If he has a premium made hand, that's great. I can raise and I'll call pretty much any amount. If he has a draw, well, if I raise to even 5,000, he's not going to be getting great odds. And I'm, I know kind of which draws are bad. Like 10-9 is very obvious. 7-6 is very obvious, right? And if he does happen to have a gut shot, like queen-9, um, he may get paid. <laughs> so I like raising to something like 5,500 or so. I go 4,650. I think this is too small. And the reason, like I said, this is too small is because I want to make sure I am actually pricing out the draws. Now notice if he does have queen nine or queen ten, he has to put in 2,600 or 2,500 to try to win a total pot uh, or a total amount for me that's going to be about 25,000, right? Because he's going to have maximum implied odds against me. So because of that, I think I want to make it a little bit bigger so that he's not just getting straight odds to draw, right? He's going to get his gut shots if he does have a gut shot. He's going to get his gut shot about 1 in 10 times, 1 in 11 times. And I'm giving him 10 to 1 odds, right? So he's roughly breaking even in that scenario. So I think I do want to make it a little bit bigger. Now, if he does have queen 10 and he gets a queen or maybe even a 10, maybe then he still does lose some money. So it's not exactly like I'm just only putting money in whenever I'm beat, right? Because sometimes we'll get top pair. If he does have 10-9, notice he has... Eight outs, so now I definitely want to make a bigger race to try to price those out too. So I think I like 5,500, maybe even something like 6,800. So if he does have a set, he's just not folding. If he happens to have a weirdly played Queens, he's probably not folding. Um, 
So I think I like a bigger race. I think I should have done 5,800 or maybe even 6,500. If the board was more draw heavy, like say there was a flush draw available, I would definitely make it bigger because then there are many more very clear, obvious draws. So anyway, I make it 4,600. The opponent does call. When he just calls, I think his range is... Well, given I did raise so small, it's probably going to be all gut shots and better. And then probably just two pair and better, really. Turns a 10. So queen, nine, and... Can't even think. Queen, nine, and nine, seven got there. Nine, seven. Was that a double gut shot? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight, seven, eight, nine, ten jacks. That was a double gut shot. Forgot about that one. So... Not a great turn, right? Many of the obvious draws got there, but the most obvious ones, 7-6 uh, and 10-9 didn't get there. But remember, 9-7 should be as obvious as 10-9 because they all had 8 outs. So my opponent checks, and now I have to decide what to do. Well, do I want to play for all the money? Yes, clearly still. If the opponent does happen to have the straight and he raises all in, I'm not folding, I'm calling. A lot of people get in this spot and think, oh, should I fold? I'm probably beat. Like, yeah, you're probably beat, but you have to put in 11,000 to win 50. <laughs> We have to put in 11 to win 50. We're going to win 20% of the time. So that's fine. Um, I did want to get money in the pot against sets in two pairs, just in case he calls now in the turn to something like a 9 or a queen or a 7 or a 6 that kills my action on the river. So I think betting bigger is fine. We're not necessarily betting big to price out draws at this point because any bet we make is going to essentially price them out. Well, any bet more than you know, 4000 or 5000 So I think this is fine, but I maybe it could go even a little bit smaller. I, I don't mind this, though. The reason I don't mind it again is just because if he does happen to have one of those nut hands, we're going to get all the money in. But this time he folds. So how do we feel about this? Well, I think I should have raised bigger on the flop. Let's just go back to the flop really quick. Um, on the flop, when he bet 20, or raised to 2100 I definitely should have gone bigger. That would have made it easier for me to get more money in on the turn, and it also would have priced out his draws. Some of the draws, at least the gut shots. Um, you can't really price out open-ended straight draws when you know you're going to pay them off, right? Whenever you're deep stacks. Um, if the turn was a queen or a seven or a nine or a six. I'm oh, sorry, nine or a four. Those are all turns that are very clearly bad for me. And, and realistically, a 10 is also bad, right? A 10 and a uh, 6 are also bad. So maybe I'm supposed to check this turn. I could definitely be convinced I should check here and then call any river bet. If, uh, this is, again, one of these spots where if you can look and tell your opponent likes their hand, like say they perk up a little bit when this 10 comes, you should definitely check because it is somewhat likely your opponent does have um, the draw that got there. And if your opponent does have a pair and a draw, realize the pair is dead, right? They have, so really, they still just have a gut shot if they had a gut shot on the flop. So uh, I think I should have raised bigger on the flop for sure. As played, if I did use that small flop raise, I probably should have checked the turn. It feels weird to check the turn, but if I do think the opponent's range is a lot of sets, which are going to pay me on the river most of the time anyway, or draws, well... One of the draws just came in, and the other draws are probably going to fold to a bet. So maybe this is just a check. I don't know. Maybe bet smaller a check. I think if I go, would have gone something like 6,800 instead, maybe that think, will make him think he has some fold equity against aces if I had aces. Although I would not play aces this way. But if he did think I have aces, maybe he would then decide to jam with a draw, which would be great. But um, this time he folds. So that's me it for this hand today for PokerNews.com. If you enjoyed this, please click like, click subscribe, and please share it with your friends. I make all these videos for you to help you better your poker in your life. And, you know, if you have a, one or two friends out there who you want to help out too, share the knowledge. Good luck in your games, and I'll talk to you next week.